Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool jukebox video for you today. We have this Rockola 480 Tecna 1980 jukebox here in our showroom that we got in that we're going to be fixing up for a gentleman. And uh, we figured we would film some of it. We're going to show you the condition these come in, in and a, a common problem that these have. So this one's a little filthy. We may end up having to repaint these uh, plastic pieces on the side, right? This one here is a little worse. Looks like they may have been spray painted at some point. And there is a spot up here where it's chipped away. I don't know what we're going to do about that yet. We may just leave it. Um, you could probably fix it with fiberglass and everything. but. We've got a certain amount of time we can spend on these. We can't spend a ton of time and a ton of money because they're not all that super valuable. And then there's a dent here where somebody's hit it with something too. So that's unfortunate. Um, so it's a little ugly. But it does appear to be complete. Let me see if we can still open it. It's shut, Joe. We drilled out the lock, but it... uh. We have to spin it a little bit. So we'll open it up and then we'll look at the inside of it. So here's the inside. This thing is fresh right out of an operator's warehouse where it sat forever. And then we put it in our warehouse and it sat in that warehouse for forever. So uh, this thing has the same problem that just about every Rockola is going to have. You're going to see this on a bunch of them. We get emails about this all the time. We did a video about it, but we're doing this one now just to uh, go at it from a little bit different perspective. So here's the problem. Notice how the record is down on the turntable. It should be over here in the basket. What's going on is it's stuck like that. The reason that it's stuck is because this gear assembly up here, the gripper bow, if you touch it, it's got sticky crap all over it. See that? That's grease that they put in it either from the Rockola factory or an operator put in it, or it's WD-40 that somebody sprayed on there. See how you can even see it? Now, a lot of times you can't see it all over it like on this one, but on this one you can. Inside this, there's a piston that moves in and out, and that's what makes everything work. So there's a motor on the bottom that turns some gears and stuff and makes this all do its thing. After it sits for years, that stuff hardens into like almost like a glue. And uh, WD-40 does it too. So if you spray WD-40 on one of these, in a few years you're going to have a problem. Don't do that. So how do you fix it? Well, we did a video where you take this thing all the way apart and clean it all up. And that gets it where it can move again. But there's another way you can try to do it that's less effective but uh, may work in your situation. So this one, whenever we first plugged it in, it was kind of up in the air a little bit. It was actually this, this record was up in the air. It was about halfway. We turned it on, it tried to move, and we pushed it, and it started a bit slowly going down. So it's halfway working, right? So on this one, we may be able to get away with pouring oil all over it. So what we're going to try to do is get oil down in all of these cracks down here and try to break up some of this crud to where it'll uh, start moving. If you get one and the you've got these two circuit breakers up here, this one's the mechanism circuit breaker. You reset it by just pushing it in. This one's the 25 volt AC power. I think it's uh, I think the end of the the little breaker might have broke off. Too. That's why they're at different distances from it. But ba basically, it's a circuit breaker. You push in to reset it. So you may have a situation where your mech circuit breaker has tripped because what will happen is it gets all gummed up and it's stuck. You turn the machine on after 30 years and you go, oh, wow, it's a Rockola jukebox. Let me see if it works. And you turn it in and it, that thing tries to move. And it can't. And so it blows the mechanism circuit breaker. Um, so it still may have amplifier problems. It still may have power supply problems. This one uses a CPU, so it still may have computer problems. We still may have all of that stuff. But if the mechanism won't even hang up the record, um, you know, we can't get to the next... Uh, the next uh, part of troubleshooting it. So uh, if you go back and watch, we've got a video where we took this thing all the way apart and cleaned it up. 
and then put it back together. And uh, we may still end up having to do that if, if it doesn't start working smoothly. But what we're going to attempt first is we're going to pour three in one oil all over it. All right, Joe, you got the oil? Yep. So this is, this is how we're going to try to free it up. We're literally going to take three in one oil. Dump all over that piston. You're going to make a big old mess. You're just trying to get it everywhere that something turns because that's where it will bind up. Put it on that little piston by the record too there, Joe. There you go. All right. Now, once you get it like that, there is a, uh, there is a, um, you're going to let it sit for a little bit. And on the bottom of the uh, mechanism, there is a motor that turns those gears. You want to find that motor and start spinning the knob on the bottom of the motor. Let me show you that real quick. All right, folks. So there's different motors. So this motor here turns this basket, right? But on this one, this motor is the one that turns the mech up at the top. There is also a motor right there that runs the turntable, right? Now in your machine, this might all be completely reversed to where instead of this motor being right here in the front, it's over there in the back. So you have to figure that out. It's different on each model. But it has this little knob on the bottom of it. And if you turn that, you're basically turning the motor. So if you turn it clockwise, you're moving it through its, its sequence. So it's laying the record down. Now watch what happens when I turn it counterclockwise. It's kind of tough to turn, but you can see that it's trying to grab the record and lift it. Slowly but surely. All right. Don't worry about that. You're just trying to get it to go through its whole movement. So eventually, it will get up where it's going and get all the way back to the basket. You may even tear the skin off your fingers turning this little freaking knob. Um, you're just trying to work it through its, mo its movement because what will happen is that piston will move and do its thing. So whenever you get it all the way down, you will have other places you can oil. And you just want to keep doing this back and forth, back and forth. We let the oil sit on there for about 10, 15 minutes. It, it freed it up enough that I'm able to get it this far up. Right? So eventually, if you turn it far enough, yours might be so hard that you can't hardly turn it. If it is, just, just work it back and forth however far you can. Like if you can only turn it half a turn, just turn it back and forth half a turn. You can actually, you can grab the other, the arm with your hand and kind of help it a little bit, but you don't want to bend it or break it. The thing's cast, or I, I guess it's cast, it looks like it is. Um, it'll, it'll actually break in half, so you don't want to like force it or anything, but you can help it. So eventually, it will get all the way down. Now again, on yours, ours was working a little bit, so it's a, a little more loosened up. But on yours, it might not be this good. So just keep working it, keep working it, keep working it, keep working it, keep working it. So when it hangs it up, what it's supposed to do is let go of the record. So now it's all the way down. So if you watch that little piston, it needs to go in. That's probably going to be the hardest part because for it to do that, it has to move through all of that grease, right? So now I can't hardly turn it. So we're going to keep oiling that, and I'm just going to work it back and forth from here past it. See the gear in the front here trying to turn? You know? So you just keep working it, work it back and forth until you get that piston freed up. And uh, then it will start working better. But you got to go crazy with the oil. So I'm going to keep messing with it. Okay, folks. So as you're turning it, what you are turning is this gear. So you see the little spline on the motor there? That is what you're actually turning with your hand. See it? So once you get it all the way over, it will hang up like it did, and it will pull that piston in. And again, that piston is kind of the hardest part. The bow can move this way. This part can move this way. You got to get it all where it's moving in and out. So you've got the, the piston moving inside of the arm, and then you've also got the arm moving inside of this housing, and then you've got it all moving back here too. So it's, you know, 
Once you get it most of the way down though, it'll start being all right. Now this back gear, these two gears move. This is all set up and timed. If you've got some kind of problem, then you'll have to mess with this, but usually these are still where they're supposed to go. So we've got these, uh, they will start slipping against each other where the gears move left and right. So we've got it all the way down. Once this gets around far enough, there are some cams on the, uh, some switches on the back of it. You can see the wires to them there. This is spinning, this, is, this cam is spinning on the back and it turns on switches and turns off switches. So once you get it back, it's now in home position, which means that it, uh, it makes a switch, which makes it where the basket can now move. The, the basket can't move while this arm is up in the air because when the arm is up in the air, the cam is turned which means that the wrong switch is on, so it's killed power to this basket. So once you get it all the way back now, the basket can move. So we're gonna plug it in and see what happens when we plug it in now that we've got it in the home position. It might do anything. I mean, it could hang the record back down or something. Go for it, Joe. Yeah, so it's trying to hang the record. See it? It's very slowly doing it. Do you see it? So it's trying to play a record. It thinks that it's played it, so now I'm trying to cancel it. There we go. So the memory of the, comp the computer must have some records stored in memory, and it's trying to play them. There's the basket moving. All right, so we've got our operating scan up here. All right, so we're scanning, we're scanning, but you saw how it started moving. So if you've got one that is actually uh, that is actually, uh, may have blown our, uh, is it trying to pick one up now? If you've got one that is actually halfway working, that will be enough to get you going again by oiling it. But if it's more serious than this, you're going to have to take this whole thing apart. Alright, so I'm going to keep messing with it and uh, keep oiling it and see if I can get it where it's even, uh, where it moves even smoother. Okay, folks, we're going to do the next part of it. So let me show you a common problem that you may have after you do that, right? So you saw we oiled the crap out of it. We got it where it's basically doing its thing. Um, it'll scan now. Let me show you what happens when we play a record. I'm going to see which one is uh, in place. Number 177. I don't even know what that record is. We've been doing some cosmetic stuff. But this is what yours will do, maybe. Okay, so watch what happens here. Okay, so it grabs it. It's barely got it. It kind of went down in the right spot. I've got the speakers unplugged so it doesn't play the actual music so that I don't get kicked off YouTube for stealing somebody's uh, copyrighted music. But, uh, so you see it's kind of limping along, needs some adjustments so that it lays down on the center of the uh, record player. It needs some adjustments so that it grabs the record a little bit better. But watch what happens when it ends. I'm gonna end the record, and when I do, the way that it hangs it up is it does everything in reverse. So you'll see the gear start turning. But the problem that we've got is that it's not completely clean, so it's still sticking a little bit. So what'll happen is when the gear turns, it should first uh, push the piston out, right? So that it grabs the record. That's the very first thing it should do. And if everything's oiled right, by the way, I'm nowhere near it, it just looks like I am. <laughs> if, if everything's working right, that piston will come out and squeeze the record, and that'll be the first thing that happens. But what happens is, if it's still gummed up in there at all, when the gear starts turning, the piston can't come out without the, uh, uh, without the whole thing moving a little bit, because it's stuck together. So you'll see what happens is, right when it starts, this, this arm is going to go and lift up a little bit, and then the piston's going to come out, and it's going to grab a record in air, about an inch above the record that's on the turntable. And then it'll hang that up and the record will still be on the turntable. So if it's doing that, it's because you need to take the whole damn thing apart and clean it. So let me get here where I can hit the cancel switch. Now watch, you'll see it do exactly what I'm talking about. Well, if I can find the right, well that's the power switch. Where's my reject button? 
Oh, that's right over there. Okay, watch. Did you see it? So it didn't grab the record because the the thing still being gummed up a little bit made it where it moved slightly first and it did it in the air. So the way that we need to remedy that is we need to take the uh, the gripper arm apart and clean everything. So uh, let me show you how to do that. Okay folks, so your first step is, it makes it a lot easier if you have one of these pin punch sets. They make different ones. Basically on this particular game, the particular machine is that it is a one eighth of an inch pin punch. Um, and so on the gripper arm, there is a little tiny pin that holds the whole thing together. So you can easily move this in and out. And then you have a little tiny pin. You put your pin punch in, hit it a little bit until you tap it out the other side. Once you get it all the way out, this first piston will all come apart. You want to do it, if you can, where the arm is not going to hit a record because that thing um, inside there is probably going to pop out once we get it all apart. So that is step one. So let me get that out. Okay, now depending on how stuck yours is up inside where the piston goes and where the spring is and everything, whenever you do that, some of that's going to come apart. If it does not come apart, you may have to raise it up in the air a little bit like I did here by turning the knob on the bottom of the motor again so that you can get it turned up to where you're no longer going to interfere with the basket, right? But eventually, now that that cotter, that pin is out of the back, this entire piston is going to come out. You can see the hole where the thing was going through it. You can also see that there's all kinds of just nastiness all over all this. That's what's gumming everything up. That's the oil that you've put on it. Or if you choose to do this first without even putting any oil on it, it'll be all of the dried up, greasy crap that they put on it at the factory or the WD-40 that somebody has sprayed on it. So now that that's out, this bar, this tone arm will come loose. Same thing. There's just nasty crap all over everything that needs to be cleaned. And now we can get the other part. We might have to go back down though. Let me, uh, let me hang it back up and see if I can get the, the end part off, the tail piece there. If you've got a manual for any of these, by the way, it'll have an exploded view that shows how everything goes. Um, some of them are on the internet you can find that you can download or you can buy one from various places. Now there's no longer a spring involved here. And since the arm isn't stopping it over here, I just was actually able to turn it too far, right? So we got our little tailpiece off, same thing. See, this is your whole problem. All this crap on it has dried up and got all gummy, so nothing is working like it should. Usually that's far enough. You don't have to mess with the rest of it, but you see how that spins? You need to get that where that spins nice and uh, um, it, sh it should basically be so loose that you can't leave it like that. See, <laughs> see how it basically it'll stick anywhere I leave it is sticking still and think about it if the arms down whenever this starts turning what's happening is the gears are turning instead of this staying down until it gets to where it's supposed to it's pulling it with it because everything's stuck together so we've got to get this all freed up too so I may actually have to take this loose I was just saying usually you don't have to but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that clean enough maybe see the more of the trash inside of there <laughs> yeah, it's sticking a little bit. It's just you don't want to take as you want to take the least amount loose that you can, so that you uh, don't end up in a situation where you put something back in the wrong place or in the, I mean in the wrong uh, orientation. All of this is kind of timed, you know. freaking mess. Well, I think we might have to go a little deeper to get it cleaned up. So what we're going to have to do now in, in some machines, this is the front and some machines, this whole basket will be turned around. So if you've got one where the basket's over here and you're going, what the hell? 
Well, it's all just backwards. There's usually an access door on the back where you can get to it. As has this one. So I'm going to take that door off so we can look at the back. I'm going to show you how to get these two gears off next. So I've removed the back panel. It's usually really simple to do. Like on this one, there's just a couple little, literally little catches that you push down. Um, and so now we're looking at the back where you can hook up the external speakers. And uh, we've got this... Uh, little mech board here PCB this is a Rockwell of 480 if yours is much older than that it may not have this board and then we've got these little cam switches here uh, whenever this cam turns around there is a timing to hit certain switches and make different things happen you want to make sure this isn't loose sometimes it is but this one is not you can actually adjust that too there it shows you how to do it in the manual but if you look there are the gears that I was talking about, right? And they're simply held on with grease and a screw. So that screw is holding a little, uh, a little arm on it, uh, which I believe is the thing that makes the, uh, I believe it's the part over here that, yeah. Okay, see how that's moving? It's the part over here that brushes the, uh, that the little brush brushes the needle <laughs> but anyway that's on the back so you have to take that off so that the um, the gears can come off so I'm going to take that screw loose I need to turn it off to do that I've got the thing still on just so that um, the, we would have the light but I gotta turn it off for now if I can get to it without screwing up my switches here there we go. All right, so now that I've got it loose, I'm going to go around to the front where I can catch it whenever it falls apart. But um, once we get that, we'll take the gear off. Okay, folks, so looking from the front, I turned it back on so we get some light. We get some light. Now, remember, when you turn it on, it basically needs to be in the home position, which it will do. It'll make itself be in the home position. You can actually scan it. So that proves that the, uh, all right, that the gripper bow is over here. Because if the gripper bow was somewhere else, it would hang it up first before you'd be able to move the basket. And again, the reason it does that is because the, the cams in the back, those switches have to be turned on and off in the right order or it can't do that. But you can do all this with it turned off. I'm just doing it so you can see it with the light a little bit. So you can see that now that I've messed with that, see that cam down there? You can actually get to it from the front pretty good, but without that back cover being off, you can't see that there's just a screw holding that on, right? And so that cam comes right off once you take the screw out, okay? So now that that's done that, here's the fun part. This gear sometimes wants to cooperate, sometimes it doesn't. It's also cast or some cheap kind of pot metal stuff. It can break, so you got to be very careful here. But you're trying to just get it to come off the end of that piston. All right, this one wants to cooperate. Whoop. Okay, so see the, uh, the shaft, they can only go two different ways, right? And this little pin will help you figure out which way it's supposed to go. But you want to keep this, uh, you want to keep this, am I looking at it backwards? I think, I think it was this way. But anyway, I've got it all on tape here, so I'll figure out how it goes back. But you want to keep it pretty much the way that it came off, right? Okay, so now that's not enough. We're going to take the next one off too. All right, and same thing. Don't go crazy. You're just trying to put a little bit of pressure on it so that it'll come loose. Because if you bend this stuff or if you get on it crazy, you will chip the hell out of it. Now it looks like what's going on is, yeah, there's something there on the back, so it can't come off in the current position because it's hitting that gear. So I need to turn it. 
until it gets to a point where it can miss that gear. Alright, so that's all the way one way. Let me mess with this. I'll come back whenever I get it where it can uh where it's cleared the gear here. So I basically turned it till it's got the arm basically straight up in the air, although the arm's not on it, and it looks like it's in a position where it's gonna pop out now. There we go. Well, I'm gonna have to finagle it a little bit, but we're getting there. So it's it's instead of just the uh, gear coming off, the entire sleeve's coming out, but we wouldn't mind getting the entire sleeve out. I guess though we could take that out the front. Let me mess with it with both hands until I can get it apart. <laughs> All right, so we got every part out, and there's just there's just a shaft now. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean everything by hand, piece by piece by piece by piece and then slowly put it all back in in the reverse order that I disassembled it. And we're gonna see if that makes it uh, work a little better. Now, as far as what do you oil it with, you wanna use 20 weight oil if you can. So you can get that at Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, if you get three in one oil in the, with a red can, that's 10 weight. If you get it with a blue can, that's 20 weight. Um, so uh, 20 weight oil works pretty good. So let's go get some. This is the manual showing you an exploded view of what we've been screwing around with. Okay. So this is looking at the front. That's what we're down to right now. Right. So there's the pin that holds it all together. You take that loose and this tail piece comes off. Remember we did that kind of last though because it was stuck. The piston and the spring that goes inside pop out. And then you can also take the gripper bow off. So once you do that, there is nothing going through this shaft, which means that that shaft can now come out. Right? But what we did was we went around to the back behind these gears, and we took a screw loose that isn't shown here on this that, uh, that holds the, uh, that little arm that wipes the, uh, the needle. We took that loose, but once we did that, we were able to take that gear off the end, and then we had to rotate it a little bit to, to uh, take this gear off. And uh, whenever we did, this whole shaft came out the front along with this cap. So that's really all we've done. It's looked like more, but really it's just the very top. Oh, and then we took the little housing here out. It's just the very top of it, just the gripper bow. You're not messing with the cam. The switches that are on, the, on the back of the cam go back here. You're not messing with any of that. You're not messing with any of this stuff here in the front. Just the gripper bow, because that's what gets gummed up. Um, that's your problem. That needs to move precisely because of basically this piston going through it is the whole main problem. Right. So uh, we've got it all apart, and now we're going to slowly clean it and put it back together. So here's that housing. We've cleaned it up, got all the nasty old grease out of it. And here's the piston that goes through it. We've cleaned it up, got all the nasty old grease out of it. So this is regular 3-in-1 oil, literally called 3-in-1 oil, but all this is is 10-weight oil. This will work, but it's a little bit too thin. So this is also 3-in-1 oil, but look, it's a, got a blue label. It says SAE 20-weight. So this works a little bit better. It's just a little bit thicker. So long-term, a little bit better on this kind of stuff and see it says engineered for quarter horsepower motors or larger All right so we're just going to oil it a little bit and start putting the stuff back and clean each piece really good as we go um, not necessarily clean it cosmetically you're just trying to get all of the grease out of it that's all gummed up and you'll see exactly what I mean as soon as you start messing with it you'll go oh okay yeah I see exactly what he's talking about it's like it the stuff is so thick it's like it's almost like glue it's like cake batter or something that just makes it all sluggish. But I'll show you at the end of the video here, uh, when it picks that record up, you'll say, well, hard to deny that that's what the issue was.
Okay, folks, we got it all back together. Looks nice and clean. See how this will just drop now? See what I'm doing? Now, why is it doing that? It's because I got this thing so freaking clean and so lubed up that it doesn't hang. You see what I'm saying? Just the weight of the bow is making it, making it fall. That's how you need it. That way, whenever it starts turning, the gears can turn independent of the bow. And so when the gears turn, it won't lift the bow up, right? Okay, so uh, we're going to try it. What, which one? I think we were doing 177. Let's try the same exact one and see what happens. Oh, important thing. When you put that cotter pin, or the, it's not a cotter pin, that set pin or whatever, roll pin. When you put that roll pin back in and you pound it in there, you need to feel the edge of it. Because if it's sticking out too far this way or too far that way, what happens is this tail piece can't go inside this shaft whenever it gets to its, its spot. And if that tail piece doesn't go inside, then it sticks out too far. And so whenever you get about halfway through, it's going to hit some of the like the little diverter and the things that make it choose the side, it'll hit something and hang up about halfway up in the air. So if yours is doing that, it's because that's not going all the way in. So watch whenever we pick one up, that should go all the way inside this shaft. Now if it's sticking out too far or something, you might even need to take a file and file the pin down a little bit. And, you, and you, you're probably thinking, well, you shouldn't have to do that. It should fit if it's original. Yeah, but you just pounded on it, right? So when you pound on it, it screws it up a little bit. Nothing wrong with taking a file and just getting it where it's not sticking out of either side. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we were doing 177. Let's see if it does it. And watch that piston and see if it goes all the way in. Well, if I can get my selector to work. There we go. Watch the piston. See that went in? And so by doing that, it grabbed it well, laid it down where it's centered now. That's why I didn't adjust the thing earlier, because it, it might uh, it may have been fine. Now there is another adjustment. There's a bunch of adjustments in the manual. But this thing should basically sit where it grabs it properly whenever it hangs it up, right? So whenever it whenever it's done, that should just pull in. It shouldn't lift like it was doing if we got it doing its thing. Boom. That's what you want. Cool. What do you think? Do that to yours and it'll probably work pretty good. So you just need to get it where it's all lubed up and all of the old grease is out of there. So um, hope that helps you fix yours. So which, which machines is this applicable to? Pretty much all the Rockolas. And it's just, it's not because they were a bad design. They are not a bad design. They're a great design. This thing's from 1980. It's still working. It's because that lube, once it's 40 years old, it it, uh, it doesn't lube anymore. <laughs> or somebody sprayed WD-40 on it. So uh, check that out if you've got a problem. Um, basically, if you get an old one and it's not doing anything, I, I get people emailing me all the time. Once or twice a week with a different box and they'll say, hey, I got an old 80s Rockola, those are so cool, I saw all your videos, mine doesn't do anything. Well, that's what's going on, it's almost always this. It's every single one of them we get. So there may be other issues too, but it definitely has this issue. So leave your comments below, let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And while you're at it, check out our Amazon links. So down below we have links to Amazon if you go to Amazon to buy anything by following one of our links, it gives us a little tip for sending you there. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Thank you very much. You might want to go get you a, one of those little uh, roll pin sets so you can knock that little pin out. You might want to go get you some 20 weight oil, right? I'm not trying to sell anything or anything, but uh, those that pin set I think costs about 15 bucks, something like that. And then the, uh, the oil costs about 5 bucks. Small price to pay. Um, just be careful uh, whenever you're putting it all back together and make sure that that roll pin slides back up inside of that housing like it did and 
um, put everything back kind of the way you found it, take lots of pictures. I have the luxury of I filmed it, so I can, it's real easy to just go back and I can see exactly how it was on there, how it came off, all of that. Um, either film yourself or take pictures or something, or you can just watch my film. It should be the same kind of setup. And uh, we appreciate you hanging out and watching. We also have another channel, by the way. My brother Donnie, go check that out if you uh, if you like our style. <laughs> My brother, uh, it has nothing to do with arcade games or video games, uh, but he's always into something interesting. Right now, we're working on a, an old little teeny tiny grocery store that that he bought that we're uh, we're fixing up and getting ready to rent to somebody. So go check that out. I'm over there too with him. And uh, like I said, leave your comments below. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you on the next video.